Um, uh, my name is Paul Mankert. I'm a PhD student at MIT. Um, I'm going to talk today about uh, shaping Tima beams. And um, I'm part of a research group at MIT that's called Digital Structures. Um, and we work on structural optimization and computational design. The reason we're all here today is for mass timber, because um, um, we love it or we part of this movement. But being part of this movement makes us also part of a construction industry that is responsible for 40% um, of the global CO2 emissions worldwide. And I think we start understanding how we can help with that. Uh, tall timber buildings or mass timber buildings are helping to reduce the impact of um, the building sector on the environment. But the question I have is, can we do better with mass timber? Um, if you look at uh, floor systems and timber, um, there's this research from Washington University by Kristen Strobel, and she looked at optimization of uh, floor system for timber, and she found out that actually uh, timber is heavier than steel or composite floor systems, and also require a lot more depth because wood is less stiff than steel. And in this case, you find that it's almost the same for a grid as 40 by 40, but if you look at other types of grid, 30 by 30, timber in the best case of the optimized scenario is actually a lot heavier than steel. So why is that? Um, maybe a good way to think about it is it's hard to shape um, timber in efficient sections. And I'd like to go back to the history of tennis rackets. And you start, um, it was 1874, the first tennis racket out of wood. And it was pretty heavy. I don't know if you played tennis, but um, you should try playing with a uh, wood racket. And then they made steel rackets in uh, 1967, because it was actually easier to make thin tubes and make it much lighter. And of course, then came the, graph the graphite racket um, that is a lot lighter and better as a structural material for tennis rackets. But in the construction industry, we don't only care about the structural performance by itself, but also timber as a renewable resource, and we can use it to help mitigate climate change. Um, but the problem is it's a lot harder to get efficient sections in timber. So my question is, can we do better with mass timber? Can we make it um, cheaper? Can we make it more exciting for architects or designers? And can we do it even with a, a smaller environmental impact? Um, there's two known pathways to reduce embodied carbon in buildings. One is using a material that is less embodied carbon such as timber, and I think it's clear for a lot of people. But another way of doing it is also using less of material. Um, and this is a field of structural optimization where for a given structure, we can have the same performance if we know how to place material well in the structure. And this is not a new concept. If you go back in history, Galileo Galilei, 1638, he looked at his cantilever beam from a wall and realized that you can actually shape the beam following that curve and remove the weight of the beam by 33%. And of course, um, this is not as easy as having a square piece of lumber that hangs from the wall. Um, but nowadays we have even more fancy tools that allows us to get um, very complex geometries and that are far more efficient than a full section. But the question is, how do you make them? And there's a lot of research going on in the US and abroad about using CNC fabrication or robotic fabrication to make this possible. And with parametric design, it becomes easier and easier to actually create those designs that are more efficient. And at the same time, this can be used to make more expressive structures, as the example here uh, by Norman Foster in Switzerland, where there's a cantilevering uh, beam, so it's shaped and dog bones uh, sections, because it's more efficient, but also it's part of the architecture. Same here, uh, a recent project in Australia, where the beams are uh, shaped in the length to uh, give this expression. And another example here that I like a lot from Switzerland, uh, the Tamedia building in Zurich, where um, the beam are actually uh, getting bigger close to the support because it's a whole, t a whole wood uh, building and a wood dowels connections. So it needs more surface area close to the connection. And the beam is kind of morphing to adapt to what it, to it needs. So if I go to Structural Mechanics 101, and we we'll look at uh, sections of buildings. On the right or the left for you, um, we have a um, mass timber section. And on the other side, um, 
a pretty optimized section. If you know structural design, you want to put material as far as possible from the center because it's where it's mo mostly efficiently used. So my question is, why do we make sections that have a lot of materials that are just hanging in buildings that we don't use or it's not as necessary? Because maybe we can't go as far as a wide flinch section with timber, but maybe there's an alternative that's in between that we can still left exposed and protect with fire, but at the same time is more efficient than um, massive sections. And the other thing is, if you look at a structural beams, this is a very simple example, but um, if you have a load on a beam, you have something called a bending moment, and its maximum is at the center. And usually as structural engineers, we pick the maximum moment in the beam and say, well, here's a maximum moment, I'm gonna make the section that I need for this moment, and then use the same section all over. But we also over-designing it because in the, the other parts of the beam, we don't need as much wood or as much material to resist the thing. And maybe one way to see it is if you take a pen and try to bend it between your fingers, it's gonna crack in the center, right? Because it's where you have the biggest uh, bending moment. So my research at MIT is looking at uh, finding new shapes for timber beams. How can we actually shape uh, structural elements to make them more efficient using less timber and also reducing the weight? And there's three parts in my research. So one is the computational design. What are the shapes and how they work? Um, finding ways to make them. Uh, CNC fabrication is widely available for uh, the timber industry, but there's still um, um, ways of looking at it, how to make them more efficiently. And finally is testing to make sure that um, the first part um, and the second part are actually working. And this is defined as an optimization problem where I want to try to minimize the volume of a structural element. And there's a set of constraints I need to make sure it's satisfied. And one is that the building's not gonna fail. So it's the first one, that the stress in the beam is smaller than the maximal stress of the timber. And also that it doesn't deflect more than metal limits. And another thing that's very important with timber is it's a fibrous material. And when you cut or shape timber elements, you disrupt the continuity of the fiber. And this is also taken into account in the optimization. So the general strategy about the computational design is defining in a parametric model, we use Rhino 3D and Grasshopper, um, some sort of volume that can morph um, given the external loading and I have a set of variables they can control, and this is gonna shape, find the best section, iterate through hundreds of different geometries until I find the minimal volume for a structural beam. And this is uh, done using analytical equations, not the finite element method. So each portion of the beam is defined, the stress inside the beam is defined by analytical equations. Um, so the first result when I was starting my research is looking at what if I only take a structural beam and shape it only changing the height along the length, because um, that was easier. And you can see that you can actually t remove 20% of the material in that case with a simple cut that takes less than a minute on a small beam. I was in the lab, so it was like a very small machine, but you can imagine that doing the same cuts on bigger elements could be possible, and you can remove 20% of the weight very easily. And after load testing, um, it shows that it works. Um, the only difference is that it has a more brittle behavior because you remove a load path inside the beam, but the um, design load was the same. And I'm currently working on uh, the extended version of it where you can shape in the length and also carve the section to make it more like an eye beam. And it's still a work in progress because when you start cutting um, complex shapes into a structural element, the stress um, go a bit crazy. And, and I'm working on now the exact definition of um, how this works, but the idea is to be able to shape it and the height and the width at the same time. And I think the goal will be to get close to what I have here, 65 or 50% reduction in, in volume for the same performance. And as you can see too is that when you get to get into more complex cuts, um, the work you have to do on the, on the element is also bigger. So here it's 20 minutes compared to one minute before for the same size. Um, that was the first prototype um, a few months ago. Um, so until now, I've been using um, subtractive mailing to make those shapes. But um, I also often get the question like, well, if you shape the timber beams and you remove the material, then you're actually wasting it. But I think the timber industry has been very smart of reusing offcuts and shavings. 
And another thing is uh, if you can save um, materials on older floors of tall buildings um, and floor systems, you can actually save on columns, foundations, and all the other things that are coming um, underneath. But I'm currently also working on a um, new fabrication method, um, additive manufacturing, because Gulam is also just adding small pieces of timber together. So why not just change the length of the pieces that are coming together into something that's closer to an optimized volume? Um, so if you're trying to build this volume here, what the, what the wizard was showing is parametrically you can define cuts inside the beam and find size of boards that are getting close to the volume and then you can glue them together to get as close as possible to the final volume without losing too much of, of wood. And I'm currently working on this with a company in Brookline um, in New York, um, Trilox. So until now, my research has found that you can successfully shape timber beams to uh, reduce the amount of material that you use. And at the same time, it can be used to create a new architectural expression in the, t in the building. This was the first prototype I made uh, my first semester, um, trying to explore like different shapes. And as you can see here, it's getting close to an I-beam at the center where you have the biggest moment, and then close getting closer to like a square section at the end, but it's like a different uh, shape. And the next step of the research is um, applying the same thinking uh, to CLT panels um, and two-way systems, but also uh, create a sort of open-ended open design tool to kind of enable collaboration between designers, engineers, and go um, decide together on what the shape uh, of the elements should be. And maybe it goes back to the 21st century master builder, of, like they were able to build a lot of buildings because they, know, they knew the material and they were able to make it cheap and that's why they got a lot of build projects, because if you can make it cheap, then people are more willing to pay for it. Um, and the next part of my research is also to find uh, implementation in practice, because it's, it's nice to do in a lab and test small uh, scale beams, but at, at the end of the day, I think the idea is to be able to implement it in, um, in a lot of buildings. And maybe the takeaway is that um, if you look at this building, there's a lot of ideas like this one to build tall buildings out of wood. And if you take every floor system and you could remove 20 to 50% of the wood that we put in the floor systems, then you could uh, trigger a lot of savings on the weight, also on the money you spend um, building those elements. Thank you. <laughs>